Hey friends, we're out here at the cabin today and I'm gonna conduct a pretty interesting experiment. I wanna see if I can run the entire off-grid cabin on a golf cart battery. Let's try it out. This is the Mosasaur lithium phosphate 48 volt battery. And again, it's a golf cart battery designed for the modern electric golf carts and really offers a ton of power. Not only can the battery produce over 10 kilowatts of power, it also has the storage capacity of 105 amp hours. So again, for a golf cart battery, that's gonna be great for a long period of time in between charges, or actually here at the cabin, it's gonna be really great because we can go multiple days with just a single charge. Now, in order to run that big 48 volt battery, we're going to need to convert the power over from DC into AC. 120 volts is what the cabin uses as normal power. This is what you're gonna find in most of your normal houses. Now, to do that conversion, we need what's called an inverter. This is the inverter that we're looking at today. This is a 3000 watt inverter. So again, it's gonna produce a lot of power for us, but it is designed for a 48 volt system you can see right there. Now this is a pure sine wave inverter. And even though the normal output is 3000 watts, we actually can get peak startup wattage all the way up to 6,000 watts. This should be plenty to run things like our circular saw, and some of our other generators. Now the company that makes this inverter is based out of China, but they actually have really great customer service that I was able to interface with. Now this battery is capable of producing over 10 kilowatts of output or 10,000 watts. So it's a ton of power availability and they use this again to get up hills and things like that for golf carts that need all that power. When we go into the inverter, we're limited to what the inverter is able to produce. So again, that 3,000 watts is what we're gonna be limited to or the peak 6,000 watts. Now we're conducting this test because I wanna see if these golf cart batteries are actually good as emergency power sources. Now our cabin is fully off grid, but you may be in an environment where you have an emergency and wouldn't it be nice to just plug in to this battery that's already in your golf cart so you don't have to go out and get a secondary power generator. Now again, if you're using this in your golf cart for emergency purposes, this would be mounted in your cart. You would have to get an inverter and then connect things up so that you have a power source to plug in the rest of your home appliances with. But again, that connection is actually really easy. Let me show you exactly what we need to do. Now, one of the things to take note of in the instruction manual is using one of these 48 volt inverters, you can actually use 12 volt batteries. You just have to wire them up in series so that they become 48 volts. Now, looking on this side of the inverter, you can see the two terminals are gonna need to connect up. They come with the little nut and washers on top of them. I've taken them off of the positive side right there. And basically all we do is we take our little ring terminal, we place it over the post, and you can use the wires that came with it, no problem. And then we're gonna put our nut and our washer back on, on top of here and get things tightened down. You'll need another 14 wrench to really get this nice and tight. Once that's on there really good, we'll go ahead and repeat the process with the black wire. Okay, if you got the positive and the negative wires connected up now, let's get things connected over to the battery. Now, just a word of caution, friends, this process is dangerous. You're working with electricity. This is a 48 volt system, which means it has a lot of power output. So use your own discretion. This, this video is simply an informational test for my own purposes. You need to assume your own risks if you're gonna be working with electricity and these 48 volt systems. Now, on the right side of the battery, the way I have it facing, you're gonna see our positive and negative terminal entry points. Now, we need to get these ring terminals on here, so we're gonna to have to install a post. And thankfully, this bag of posts is included with the battery. You have a number of different options, including these short stubby ones, which I think are gonna work really great. Okay, you can see I've fed the bolt through the ring terminal there, and then basically it just enters very nicely into that post hole on the side of the battery. Now to properly tighten things down, we'll take a Phillips head screwdriver and I'm just going to hand tighten this. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that down with my screwdriver. The other thing we can do is add these caps on top of the terminals. These are included with the battery. It's just gonna allow us to have a little more safety here. Now, one last thing we need to do is actually hit our little switch here. This is going to make all those connections and enable the battery to be live. And at this point, we should be able to come down here and turn on our inverter. As you can see, I had to hold for just a moment. You'll hear it starting up that fan internally and check it out. 
we actually have input right now, 52.3 volts, 60 hertz. Output, 121 volts. Right now, we are currently not outputting at all. You can see it's at zero watts. I love that this little screen is right here, right on top of the inverter. So again, with this simple connection, we've now enabled 120 volt electricity to be accessed with what you're normally used to seeing, these three prong little outlets that can now be accessed with an extension cord. Again, this is all you need in order to access emergency power from your golf cart battery. Remember, this would obviously be plugged in. You'd have to have this inverter somewhere near the golf cart and then run an extension cord to any of the appliances, things that you'd like to operate. But can this operate our entire cabin? That's our next step. I'm gonna go ahead and plug an extension cord in and I'll show you how we're gonna get power into the whole house. Okay, out of our inverter, which you saw me plug in, I've run this red extension wire up here into our power closet and connect into our power panel, which is on the other side of the wall here. You can see it open right there. Now, normally what we do is we plug in our little solar generator to this 30 amp plug. It's kind of like an RV plug and basically it's able to run the whole house. Now we have a little bit of a problem because this extension cord is not able to plug directly into this 30 amp outlet. So we need a quick converter. This guy should do the trick. If you need something like this, you can find it on Amazon. Basically what we can do is we can stick it in here. And with that plugged in, we now have a cable that we are able to attach to that inverter. Now remember, when I connect this up, we're gonna be reducing from 30 amps all the way down to 15 amps in here. So again, it's a little bit of a reduction in power. This is obviously not the most efficient way to do it, but it's what we have to test. Okay, with that plugged in, now comes the big test. Let's try to flip on some lights and run some electricity. Okay, first things first, let's run a simple light. You can see the kitchen light right behind me. I'm gonna go ahead and flip on the switch here. And we have light. That's really cool to see. Let's run some more stuff. Okay, you can see the fan is going. So we're now pulling wattage to run that fan. Everything's working great. What else can we turn on? Lights in the kitchen are working good. We can kick on the bedroom light. I turned the TV on upstairs, so that's pulling a little bit of wattage now. We can actually kick on the power for the keyboard. Oh yeah, it's working good. Let's get these stair lights working as well. Flip that switch and get it on. Let's go ahead and power on our microwave as well. Just hit the one minute button. Seems to be drawing enough power, no problem. Okay, now for the big test. This is my DeWalt circular saw and it has a ton of startup amps. So if I can use this, it'll be a huge upgrade. In previous videos, we've showed you our 12 volt systems with 2000 watt inverters that just has not been able to hand the startup wattage for this saw. So let's give it a go. Now this is a serious problem in the past, but check it out. That 48 volt battery paired with the 3000 watt inverter is working this thing no problem. Now in a regular home, not off grid like ours, you're gonna have big major appliances and other electronics that probably are gonna be drawing a lot more electricity, things like a refrigerator, washer and dryer. And basically we are only able to kind of test what we have. A lot of those other things I mentioned are run off of propane for us. So note that what our power usage is, is gonna be a lot less than what a typical house would be. That being said, we seem to be able to be running everything just fine. Let's go down into the basement and let's check the output on the inverter. Okay, back down here in the basement, you can see our output. And so right now we're running about 260 watts. And again, that's not with the microwave going, that's just our lights, our TV, the keyboard, all those various things, even the lights here in the basement. And so for our typical usage, that is gonna be average for something like in the evening when we're running more of those lights. And as you can see, this inverter has produced plenty of wattage for us to use. And more importantly, this battery has been able to handle everything that we've thrown at it. Now coming down here to turn things on and off is really not very practical. That's why this remote switch is such a cool little addition, as well as the Bluetooth functionality that's gonna allow us to get a viewing of what's on this screen and the output on our phone. Now thankfully the setup is just dead simple. One end is gonna go straight here into the inverter 
and then the other end goes here on the back of the switch. Now we'll take some time in the future to mount this up into our kitchen area, which again is right above where we have these things. And that way everything is within easy access for us. So we don't have to crawl down here into the crawl space to turn things on. Now, obviously we're gonna need the readout from the inverter to get a true wattage output that the inverter is giving us. But if you have this mounted in a golf cart, well, you need to monitor the battery as well. And that's where this comes into play. It's a smart battery LCD and it actually is included with the battery. Now you'd wanna mount this on the dashboard of your golf cart, maybe somewhere near the steering wheel where you can monitor it very easily. So as you can see on the right hand side near those terminals, we have a little LCD output. So we're gonna take one end of our cable and we're going to be putting that in here. And then the second end of the cable will actually put on the bottom of the little monitor itself. With everything attached, we can then push the little power button down here. As you can see, the LCD comes on and check that out. We immediately have all sorts of really, really great data from our battery. You can see that we're at 44%. Remember this battery doesn't come fully charged. We're currently outputting, meaning a negative number, 4.85 amps. You can see the current voltage. You can even see the current battery temperature. Now this is in Celsius and this is really cool down here. You can actually see the amount of time remaining on the battery. In this case, we have nine hours and 22 minutes before the battery fully runs out. You also have different pages of data and information. So I can click on page two. Again, this is a touchscreen, which is so nice. Look at all this extra stuff that we can see. And then page three. And this is gonna be a live view of all the cells within the battery so you can see if a specific cell is going bad or not. Again, very, very cool information. Now this battery really is the whole package. It comes with this fast charger, and this is something you can mount in your garage to your home. So again, you can plug your golf cart in. Here's the power outlet that you can mount, as well as the plug-in. And again, all of this is just included. We won't have time to fully test this, obviously, because we're out here at the off-grid cabin. But again, for normal golf cart use, this is perfect. So there you go, friends. That worked out fantastic. This little 3000 watt inverter was able to handle everything we threw at it, and it really is able to run our off-grid cabin just perfectly. Again, you need kind of an interesting setup. You need that 48 volt battery configuration using 12 volt batteries or using a 48 volt battery like what we have here. Connect it up, and then you have to have a specific power configuration that's able to operate off of your power panel. Again, it worked perfect for us, but even somebody needing some emergency power power, things like that, that they can just plug into an outlet using the front outlets on top of here on an extension cord. It's just going to work really, really good. So a very successful test. I'm super, super happy. If you're interested in grabbing this inverter for yourself, you can grab it right here on Amazon. And then stay tuned because we're actually going to be hooking everything up to full solar charge so that we have a complete system. We'll be posting those videos later here on the channel. Subscribe and we'll see you again on the next one.